Ready? Yes. What are you ready for? To the conversation. Fine. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Can you speak louder? Good afternoon. Are you afraid? Just worried. Why? Paratroopers don't worry. I'm not a paratrooper. Special forces? No, the regular infantry. We have the special forces infantry today. How are you doing? It's fine as long as we're here. Are there any options? No. Where is not okay? When are you at war? Right. Is it worse in the army than in captivity? It's worse in the army. There are no distinctions. There you can leave the barracks, take a walk. If you are a contract soldier, go out into the city, and that's it. Is being in captivity almost like being in the army? I guess so. Tell me you're being fed. Yes, they do. Even so? And in the army, even the food is the same as in captivity. And the TV? No. Here? No. Is there a TV here? Yes. Why did you immediately say no? I thought it would be better that way. What? That it would be better that way. Very interesting. What do you mean by better? Why are you cheating? There shouldn't be, it seems to me, a television set in captivity. Why shouldn't it be? I always thought captivity was the same place, only without the TV. And here's the TV. Yes, I was surprised. That's amazing. How big is the TV? Big. Will it fit in your hands? Yes, it is. It fits in your hands. I don't think so. No? Don't know. I think yes. Introduce yourself. Private Petrov Pavel Alexandrovich, born in the year 2002. Since March 21st, I have been serving in the military unit of the 210574th Brigade. I arrived in Ukraine on January 16th. I was taken prisoner on January 26th. That's it? That's it. How old are you? 20. 20? Yes. 20. Do you agree to the recording and publication of the conversation? Yes, why not? I don't know. Some people say no and go about their important business. If you have to, write it down and post it, right? Yes. Doesn't matter? It turns out that yes. What are the options? There's always a choice. You can say no and go do important things and I'll go home. No, publish it. And why? Why not? Do you want to be a blogger? No. Why? Not interested. What's interesting? It's interesting to do programming, not blogging. So you're a hacker? Absolutely not. Programming what? Predominantly 3D modeling, programming. But not blogging. Already know what you want? Approximately. Are you mobilized? I'm a contractor. When did you sign the contract? Last year, in April or May, I think, in May. Please speak even louder. And in May, did you know that the war was already on? Yes. Why did you sign a contract? Were you an enlisted man? Yes, I signed a contract after five or six months of enlistment. What for? I wanted to serve in Russia, but not in the war. And in this way it turned out that I skipped a whole year, I was not sent to war. A whole year? That was possible in this brigade. No? In the brigade where I served, it was possible to avoid being sent to the front. Tell me how. Many people have already told me about it. It's going to sound strange, out of place. We're just in a mess in the army. When the war started, everyone was busy just finding a man and sending him here. Because there were no personnel, there was no one to watch us. The commander's head is full of some papers, eternal papers. He doesn't even know the faces of his men who are under his command. It just so happened that two weeks after I signed the contract, I went home. No one touched me, no one needed me, no one called me. Wait, one more time. This is a very interesting story. You signed in May. At last, my dear. She's pleased, you see. Don't peek. Okay. This is a military secret. Did you bring military secrets with you? 
I don't know what you're talking about. You're in the military, aren't you? Yes. You were given a military secret. No. They didn't give you one? I don't have any secrets. They say if you lose a secret, they'll give you the next one. There is no such thing. It wasn't. You signed your contract in May, walked around the unit for two weeks, nobody touched you, and you went home? Yes, I left after two weeks, not right away, because I decided to see if anyone needed me after I signed the contract, how things would work out there. So for two weeks I went to the morning lineups. Only people who wanted to go were there. Nobody cared whether you came or not. So I could just as easily not show up, and no one would even notice. You're lost, and until they find you, you can mind your own business and not show up at the unit. That's what happened to me. I lived at home for a while, then returned to the city. How long were you at home? Until September and then I came back. Until September? Yeah, that's it. May, June, July, August. Yes. Four months? Yes, and then I came to Yurga. I didn't go to the unit, I rented an apartment there, because at any time I could get a phone call and be confronted with the fact. You're on the list, you have to come on board, on the plane. How long have you lived in the apartment? Until January. From May to January. Nine months did you walk? Yes. Wages were coming in? Yes. Stable? That's why I signed the contract. I saw the whole thing. When I was in the barracks, I didn't risk going out and acting too freely. And when I signed the contract, I let myself relax because I saw it all happening. How much is the salary? 30. How much? 30,000 rubles. 30,000. 9 times 30 is 270,000 for nothing? Yes. It's okay. The apartment cost 12, so it was okay. Are you cold? No, I'm just worried. You came in with a t-shirt, like it's July outside. I'm not cold. If it's cold, I'll ask them to bring you some clothes. That's the way the army is funny. What military unit? 21 0 74th Brigade. Commander, you're the best. You could have 50 soldiers like that on your payroll. Yeah, it also depends on the commander. The commander showed up and saw me on the list and asked who I was and why he had never seen me. And he started finding out information about me. Is that how you were found? Yes. Did you get a call? Yes. What did they say? I was immediately told on the phone that I was being sent on such and such a plane. You came. And I came. Called why? They put me on the list to board the plane right away. They decided that if I was a contractor, it meant I could do everything. So they shipped me off right away. Can't you? No, I only held a submachine gun in my hands. I never even threw a grenade, not even a training grenade or a real one. You arrive and what do you do? Where do you go? Kill Ukrainians, right? There was no such thing. They told us to load. We loaded at 4 in the morning. They took us through the village, through several villages even. I don't know the villages. I only know where we came from. They took us through 33 woodlands, we finally arrived, got off, then walked another 5 kilometers. How many people did you bring? 10. 10 in all, the team leader and 9 of us. Who is the group leader? Not the group commander, but the commander of our groups and the company commander. The company commander one way, he was not with us, he went to another place to command us from there. Officer? Yes. Who? Senior Lieutenant. When was that? After the 24th of January. The 24th? Yes. You came to the woodshed, and? The group commander's task was to walk a kilometer in one direction, and if we saw the enemy, to retreat. That is, to report to his company commander, he reports to the battalion commander, the battalion commander commands the artillery, that's how we had to work. That was the task we had. Were the nine of you told to go ahead for a mile? Yes. And when you see the enemy, do you have to retreat? Yes. But the group commander decides that we go into battle. It was the first time for me. Scary, bullets flying. I immediately fell to the ground and started crawling back. 
There's no time to shoot, no time to aim. They all, like Rambo, hit the ground and started firing back. And I was already the last one lying in the back. There were shootings there. The clearing was 12 meters wide, i.e. small. There were only four men on the flank, and everyone else was guarding the flank. The density of fire was such that if there had been more men, they would probably have all been killed. How many operations have you been involved in? In one. We saw the enemy, and in the same place the first battle took place, we were told to dig in. In the end, your artillery, your mortars, our artillery, our mortar, all working in the same landing. All on your heads? Yes, it turns out they are shooting at you, and because we are close by, they are also shooting at us. And we haven't even dug in yet, because we have nothing to dug in with. Meaning? We had no shovels, nothing. Is that all on the first day? Yes. You only fought for a day? Two days? Two days. We were supposed to be evacuated in five hours, but I was taken prisoner during the night. Were there any dead or wounded? We didn't have any. Nothing flew into our wooded area. It's a pity. Your shots are bad. I will say well, because there are hits on us even if not on my group, but on the positions of our soldiers. You are sitting in a wooded area. We dig in and just sit back. Helmets instead of shovels? I just lay down behind a huge tree. Because I knew there was no point, the roots were there, and the ground was frozen it was useless to dig with my fingernails. What about the rest? The others were lying exactly the same, then another brigade came up, there were several shovels and they started digging and dug for themselves. And we were still lying there. What happened last night? There was nothing at night, only everyone had frostbite. Nothing was going on, just everyone had frostbite? Yes, because we didn't have sleeping bags. We were told to go light and throw away our stuff because we wouldn't need it. Because they thought they'd just kill us there and that would be the end of it, that's it. So they decided they were going to bury you there, but they were going to keep your things, right? It's obvious if we are the first ones to be sent. It's not just the first line, but we are the first Russians, only Ukrainians are next. If there's a fight, there's only one option, either dead or wounded, and that's it. Have you been told anything about captivity? No. I haven't eaten in three days. Why didn't you eat? Because we threw away our food along with our things. We were told we didn't need it. When the 55th Brigade... Rambo shouldn't eat? Some of our people took some food with them. But I couldn't eat there, it didn't work, I didn't want to. You were brought in on the Ural trucks on Monday and you were sent out on the attack right away? No, they brought me in on Monday and it wasn't until a week later that we were sent on the attack. So you sat there for a week? I sat for a week, but the others had already left on Tuesday and I went a second time. Good army. I can't say. And those who went the first time, they didn't come back, did they? Most of them did not, because the rest simply refused, threw down their weapons and walked back on their own. The company commander then wrote some reports on them, complaints that they refused. And for the second week did you go? Yes. The first time there were a lot of them, 50 people. I think 20 only refused and people 10, 15 died, the rest, also people 10, 15, were wounded and the five men who left the regular contractors returned with the company commander. What did they say? They said that there were mines, shells, a tank, AGS-17. And it's impossible to walk or crawl anywhere. After those 50, various units were brought there. There were a hundred and fifty of us. Fifty men of infantry, thirty men of artillerymen, other rocketeers, artillerymen, mortar men, a lot of units. And there were five of us in the infantry. There you sit and think, what are the ten of us going to do? Yes, ten people. The commander calls the company commander on the radio, and the walkie-talkies are bugged. 
We had regular radios, not the normal ones we were supposed to have. He asked what we should do, and he said to keep going. I don't know if you're hearing this or not, maybe your units out there are getting this from someone. There should be a clash with us now, and the enemy already understands this, they are already ready and waiting for us. How were you persuaded? The commander of the group, not the company, said that we would go only once, meet there and leave immediately. We all agreed. We found them near the first stretch, probably 20 meters into the woods only. There was an arch, a big one. It's clear, to lure us in, come on in, we'll meet you there. The group commander said he realized they were behind an arch. He still somehow managed to stand up and look over that arch. Here comes the arch and he's standing on top, just his head sticking out, looking through the thermal imaging camera and seeing that one of your guys is standing there. Was there a thermal imaging camera? Yes. He looked through the thermal imager and said he was being looked at, too. And he just waits for us to pass there, that this is a machine gun, and this is already a fortified position, that if he starts working like a fan, he will capture the forest plantation through which we are going, and the forest where we had to go, just through this arch. If he starts fanning out, he's going to hit everyone. Both here and along the wooded area, the company commander said to try to crawl forward. Our commander refused. There's nowhere to crawl, only if you go in, they'll shoot us all one by one. He refused, and no one went anywhere. Evening came, and our tank shot at us eight times. Your tank? Yes. Why did he shoot at you? He fired at this landing, we were lucky again, and the shells flew into the field. The quadcopters were flying all the time. Yours? Our quadcopter was alone. We were told that it was ours. The rest of the time we just lay there, didn't move, because your quadcopters are all fancy, they have thermal imaging, cameras, they're dropping vogs, grenades. We didn't move, so as not to provoke too much. If we had to talk, we talked, but there were two dead people lying there. The bushes we were guided by. How long have they been dead? A long time ago. Why are they there? We ourselves have discussed these issues. Why didn't they remove them? At least they would have just dragged them away. They could have been dragged all the way to Moscow that way. We waited out the shelling and went this way. Two dead, bushes, a used RPG-18, these were our landmarks. We think we're coming soon, that we're going the right way. Eventually we pass these landmarks, a huge shell crater, we pass it. After these three power lines, this is your position and somewhere from these three power lines, they were standing another 500 meters before us, everything in this landing is your position. We didn't have to go over those 500 meters, because that's where you are. And we passed by our positions. The man who informed us reported to our squad leader that we were moving out, we had to be met. We were not met because they fell asleep, you see. They fell asleep, we passed them, because we too had no idea in the darkness where to go, at what exact moment to turn into this wooded area. Your post let us through, three of your posts let us through, and on the fourth one we were only detained. From the bushes, stop! Who's coming? I'll shoot! Clearly. Very loudly he said, I was walking second, with a man walking ahead of me. Because of the fast pace, whoever told us that, thought it might be someone of his own. And we were walking on the right side, and you were walking on the left side. Just because we walked on the right side, he thought it was one of yours. He told us to stand and asked who was coming. He reloaded his machine gun. I knew right away that it wasn't ours. And we made the right decision, the two of us collectively, that we should surrender, because it was useless to resist, our hands were already raised. He saw us, it was one meter from where he was. We saw him lying there, and he saw us. Give up? Because there's no way. And what's in here? That's great. 
I am alive, nobody beats me, nobody tortures me, they feed me, everything is fine. As long as you are in the woods, you can't even go to the bathroom. I'm in captivity, everything is fine. Are you going to advertise Ukrainian captivity? I won't, but I will say that people here are not beasts, as they say. Calling mom. I don't know what else to ask you about captivity. Hello. Hello. How are you doing? We're doing fine. Who are you? I am Dmitry, a journalist from Ukraine. Your son is in a wonderful Ukrainian captivity, these are his words. Do you know this? No. Now I do. Here. Now she knows. That's it. If you want to talk to him, you must consent to the recording and publication of this conversation. Okay, I agree. Don't worry, we'll talk again. Hi, mom. You don't say where you are. Only in captivity. I am a prisoner. We are not beaten. We are not tortured. We are fed. Everything is fine. How long have you been there? A month. Since the 26th of January. What to do to get you out? I have no idea. Other people do it. She has to go with this video to the military enlistment office, to the military unit, and show that you are a prisoner of war, so that they can take you away. Dad knows where to go, you'll figure it out. Say hello to daddy. Son, just hold on, please, I beg you. You, too, hang in there, you'll be fine. They say it's bad in captivity, it's not true, it's wonderful here. It's great, I'll tell you. There's even a TV, can you imagine? We love you, son. You too. Everyone is waiting for you. I'm waiting for you. Why are you crying? Because I can't come to my senses. To avoid this, my son shouldn't have been sent to our country to kill people. Then we wouldn't be having this conversation. Why did you send him? We didn't send it. What is he doing here? Ask him. Why are you here? He signed the contract himself and went. He was sent, he went. Who are the people who do the things they don't want to do? Is this where you want it to be? No. What do you call people who do things they don't want to do? Slaves. Look, it's your son, he's very smart. You said it yourself, that's the right word. Right word. You are slaves, your king has decided that here they must go to die. There are already 150,000 like him buried here. Watch the news, just not your own, where you have victory every day. Tell her about the war what you have seen, how the corpses lie, how they are not taken away. What they say about the war on TV is not true. I told you when I was still in Russia not to watch, Russian channels specifically, because it's all propaganda to appease you. Look on the internet for Ukrainian news, you can watch it every day. There's a whole TV channel there that we watch here, and it's exactly what's covered for Ukrainian people. They don't hide from their people that they too have many soldiers who died, many sons who also died. For defending their land. There are a lot of bodies lying in the fields that are not collected, a lot of our bodies, as well as Ukrainian bodies. We just don't let each other collect them and at least take the dead ones home to be buried. In essence, he told it like it is, he is a prisoner, you are slaves, you have a king. As long as you have your king, men will die, young 20-year-olds and 50-year-olds alike. Tell her, because they don't know the truth. About the cons, the truth is that they either die here or they have to fight for six months to get their sentence nullified and go free is true. But the point is that they are sent to storm. And they storm until the whole group is wiped out. So they can't even retreat back, they get shot for that. Go tomorrow to the military unit, to the brigade, to all his idiot superiors, and tell them if you want. I don't want to talk to people who don't understand what's going on and live in some comfortable world of their own.
they are the majority because most Russians live in their own world and the other part of the people who just know that there is a war going on. But for them this war is the same as getting up in the morning and drinking coffee. I mean, it's such an everyday thing for them that they turn a blind eye to it and it doesn't matter if there's a war going on or not as long as it doesn't affect them. As long as it doesn't affect them, they don't think, they don't look, they don't care, they don't care. Have you rethought your vision, your behavior? You just have to tell the truth, because of what they are told that is not true, this false view of the world is built up in their heads. And what they are told becomes the truth in their heads. People just need to be aware of it. And I can't tell them not to watch TV, they're going to keep doing it anyway. They flick the channels, find a program about the war, and decide it's interesting to listen to. One night you sat and listened after work, the second night. And so it becomes routine to watch TV every night after work, on a schedule. It's like a zombie. Were there wounded and killed in your village? I won't say exactly, but a hundred or even fifty kilometers away. Were? And the prisoners who returned. Prisoners? Yes. Do you think the whole village will know tomorrow that you were a prisoner? A week from now, yes, but not tomorrow. Will everyone know? Yes. Would that make anyone think twice? No, they will think it's terrible. For them, captivity is. What I'm saying here about our country, about the army, about provision, I think is true. And for them, the very fact that I'm a prisoner would be enough to just piss you off. I don't think it's an order to just say, go and get it. It's not an order. This command is not backed up by any plans. We were simply told, see this wooded area. Go and get it. They don't care how we do it. That is, you got the task, but how you do it doesn't matter. We have a task to take over the wooded area, and how we do it is not important. Traditionally, the prisoner of war squats 358 times. Are you ready? No, I can't. I'm kidding. Prisoners of war turn to their fellow countrymen, friends, if they want. All of my videos are an appeal. Just watch truthful information from third parties, not from TV, but from third sources, internet, telegram. No one forbids you to go in and look at the information. There you will learn all the truth, just try to think with your head. There is no need to go and fight against these people, because this war should not exist, nor should you be in it. You have no business being here, and neither do I. If you're thinking of signing a contract and going, change your mind, because you're going to die. The fact that I was a prisoner of war is just my luckiest of all. If you don't die today, you will die tomorrow.